and welcome to the Memory Lane 80s show on Spotlight TV. I'm Hayley Palmer and don't worry, I'll be looking after you for the next hour and we have got a special guest today choosing his favourite 80s songs via Skype due to the circumstances. Yes, it is John Altman, aka Nasty Nick in EastEnders, except he's not that nasty, he's really nice. Uh, so this is what happened when I caught up with him on Skype. John Altman, welcome. Thank you so Hello. much for joining me. Great, Great to have you here. Yeah, Brilliant hello. stuff. Yeah. Yes, well, of course, we all know you as uh, Nasty Nick in EastEnders. I hope you're not going to be nasty to me today. <laughs> uh, the only people I'll be nasty to is the people who uh, built my computer. I've had a lot of trouble with it recently. I mean, the hours you spend trying to, you know, you've got some really patient technical guy on the other end trying to get you, like uh, someone called Absolutely. Simon Anthony. Well, it's good to have you here. Uh, now, you were actually in the first episode of EastEnders in 1985. That's correct. Um, you've had the biggest storylines, I think. Um, you've murdered people, you've had a drug addiction. I mean, how was it playing Nasty Nick? Mm -hmm. um, great. Um, for, for any actor to play such a part, actually, because uh, they gave me each time I went back, there's always something they cooked something up or uh, something or other up that was going to be exciting or interesting, and all the viewers weren't quite sure it was going to happen, even if he was pretending to be nice. Yeah. There's nothing more annoying than that. Is a somebody pretending to be nice when they're evil? There's yeah. a, an actor called Ian yeah. Bartholomew in Coronation Street at the moment being evil to his lovely yeah. wife. I'm, I'm, he's, a, he's a mate of mine. I'm watching. Oh really? <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, you, you. I won't say the word on air, but you know what I mean. So even even when I watch EastEnders, sometimes I can become irritated by Ian Beale, even though I know the people and I worked on it. You can kind of switch off because I've been yeah. in and out. Kind of yeah. switch off and and kind of get into it. Do you know what I mean? Without thinking, oh, I've, I've worked on this or all the rest of it. So yeah, I can still enjoy the program even though I'm not not there any longer. Yeah, and June Brown, of course, who played your mum. I mean, you just had such a lovely bond between you, didn't you? Yeah, from the off, she came. Uh, a little while after Nick first arrived and, or appeared, she came in the summer of 85, I think it was, and we just hit it off from day one. You know how you do with some people, yeah? yeah? We, just, we, just, we just clicked. And I thought visually, both she and uh, Chris Hancock looked like my parents. Sadly, they, they killed off uh, uh, Chris Hancock quite early on in the, in the East Enders run, you know, but um, yeah. yeah. I think you have very similar ears to me, for example. So yeah, we looked alike, we got on, and, and it was good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you must have such good memories from the show. Yeah, so many. I mean, I, I did my autobiography a little while back. and uh... Yeah, in the nick of time. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> in the nick of time, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there couldn't be anything else, could it, really? No. Okay. Uh, you know, have you thought of things like you all nicked? Or... No, no, it had to be in the nick of time, I think. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. Well, um, let's get on to your first 80s tune that you want to pick. Um, it's The Adventures Send My Heart. From 1985, why is that important to you? Oh, I just think it's a really passionate song. I think I first heard it on the radio. John Peel might have played it. And I've often gone or tried to find music that, that's not kind of like out there and everybody knows it. Not a lot of people knew about the adventure. So when I heard that track, I thought it was wonderful. And then I got the, the album every, and every every track on their first album I, I loved as well. I um I just played it so much. I was playing it the other day. Actually, I've got it on cassette. Which hey, is, we love a cassette. Hey, which is slightly it's a little bit damaged on one track, but yeah. So um, I just think it's a really, I just think it's a really beautiful song. Send my heart. It's a, it's a, it's a love song, and uh, I, maybe it's a, it's a bit, a little bit sad, but I just find it very, very, uh, yeah, very moving and and powerful too. They're a band that had great, and they're still going. I think uh, they had great power. And also great melodies. And uh, I went to see them at the Dominion in 1988. They did a, a recording there, a, li a live recording. And, and I met them. And they were really pleased that I, I was championing, championing them, uh, you know, hey. uh, and mentioning them because, you know, they, they, I think they deserved to, to have been bigger than they, than they ever were. Yeah. They, uh, Brilliant. Well, let's check out the video. Like I say, it's from 1985. The Adventures Send My Heart. Here it is.
John Altman. Um, now I want to talk to you about um, when you were in a movie called Birth of the Beatles. Uh, you played George Harrison, is this right? Yes indeed. Not wow. so many people know about that. It was supposed to be a big feature film on all cinemas but uh, after we finished it they turned around and, and they put it on the TV. So it was kind of premiered on the BBC one dark winter's night. You know? So not a lot of people know about it but it's really nice yeah. when people come to me and, and talk about it because you can get it uh, you can get kind of pirate copies somewhere on, on, on the net, you know, from... We'll uh, shut it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can, can be tracked down anyway. A lot of people really enjoyed it too, as there haven't been that many films about the Beatles. There was Backbeat as well that came right. afterwards. But, yeah, that was a, a absolute treat for me I because I love the Beatles. I, mean, I, I kind of grew up with them. I remember hearing Please Please Me on the radio when my mum was doing her ironing. I heard this, oh, that sounds really different, you know. And yeah. so you had to have your favourite Beatle in the playground as well, like you know, favourite footballers. Uh, and I chose George because I thought I looked a little bit like him even when I was eight years old. And uh, and I like I like the songs he composed too. It was like he was allowed to put a couple of tracks on each album, but you know John and Paul did tend to dominate the the, the, the songwriting a bit. And uh, so I um yeah I I was just blown away when this audition came up through taking my picture around various casting directors and so. Uh, it was uh, Beth and Esther Charkham were in um, the, uh, was it Wardour Street then, I think? And I took oh, yeah. my photo of myself. Oh, yeah. and I, they put it on the pin board. There loads of pictures of actors and actresses. And I still say actress, but <laughs> I'm a bit old fashioned, you know. Um, anyway, yeah, so they were, this film came up and they looked up and they thought, oh, John might be good for George. So, so they put me up. And I worked really hard uh, listening to tapes of George and, and interviews and stuff so I could kind of get his voice, which was a bit sort of, you know. Like yeah. yeah, yeah, George, you know, he's like kind of so quite, quite a sort of lazy sound to his voice. You know. So um, yeah, none of us are actual real scousers, but we uh, we worked really hard on it, and uh, the audition process was really long. You as an actress will know what that's like sometimes. Back and yeah. forth. Yeah. Eventually did a video which they sent back to LA because it was an American production. Cut a long story short. Uh, yeah, got the job, and I was just I was so pleased. It was like, um, you know, it was almost like yeah, just I've been. Um, it was like a treat, you know, to, to yeah. three or four weeks we spent on it. We had oh, a hamburger at yeah. school, and um, yeah, when, when, when it all finished, it was really sad because we'd grown to uh, we'd grown to love each other. I guess it was a bond between all four of us because uh, yeah, but like it would have been with the Beatles, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, wow, that is brilliant. I didn't actually know that about you. That I mean, obviously everyone knows you for EastEnders, but it's just really interesting to know everything else you've done as well. 19, uh, was it 1979, I believe, yeah, so you, you can find it somewhere out there, <laughs> but 